Hello, this is Max. A bandit hacks into a specialized car with a unique security system, leaving him trapped inside with no one able to hear his cries for help. Don't forget to subscribe. The movie begins with the introduction of Ciro, a suspicious-looking individual, as he navigates through his neighborhood in Buenos Aires. During his stroll, he notices an attractive car and proceeds to break into it. Ciro, being a professional thug, discreetly removes the car stereo and steals a pair of sunglasses from the overhead compartment. However, instead of finding a suitable place to relieve himself, he impulsively decides to urinate on the rear seat, deliberately trying to ruin the car owner's day. To add to his mischief, he even releases a few flatulent sounds. But as Ciro finishes and prepares to leave, he encounters a startling problem the door doesn't open. Frightened, he attempts to open the other doors, but they are all securely shut. A sense of panic envelops him as he realizes the gravity of his predicament. Despite his desperate efforts to break the window glass, they prove to be impenetrable. In a last-ditch attempt, Ciro dismantles a part of the door and injures his hand severely, causing it to bleed. Frustrated and growing desperate, he resorts to shooting at the front window with his gun, but the bullet ricochets and strikes his thigh, causing him excruciating pain. To prevent excessive blood loss, he removes his shirt and uses it to wrap around the wound. After some time, a lady unexpectedly arrives outside the car, engrossed in applying lipstick while looking at the window. Ciro tries to get her attention and seek assistance, but she remains oblivious to his presence and disregards his shouts before walking away. Ciro then attempts to contact his wife for help, but his phone's battery dies before he can complete the call. After several hours of futile attempts, exhaustion takes over, and Ciro eventually falls asleep. Upon waking up the next morning, Ciro is tormented by an intense thirst and realizes he has run out of water. In a desperate state, he resorts to licking the condensation off the car window to alleviate his thirst. Throughout the day, he takes out his backpack and retrieves the stolen car stereo to listen to music, hoping to momentarily distract himself from his dire situation. As one of his favorite songs starts playing on the radio, Ciro becomes completely absorbed in its rhythm and lyrics, momentarily forgetting his troubles. Ironically, the lyrics of the song describe his current condition, mentioning hazy windows, blood, and being trapped. Inspired by the song's message, Ciro becomes determined and makes another attempt to unlock the door. Suddenly, a phone rings from the car's stereo, and when Ciro answers, he finds himself speaking to a man on the other end. The man introduces himself as Dr. Enrique Ferrori and warmly welcomes Ciro into the car. Enrique reveals that he is the owner of the SUV and has been a victim of theft 28 times before, with Ciro being the 29th person to attempt stealing from him. Infuriated, Ciro desperately demands to be released, but Enrique firmly reminds him that he has no power to make such demands. Continuing the conversation, Enrique proceeds to explain the car's features. He refers to it as a 4x4, highlighting its security alarm system connected to his phone that enables him to lock all four doors. The car boasts soundproof and bulletproof construction, and due to its independent suspension, it cannot be moved from the inside. Additionally, all the windows, including the front windscreen, are polarized. The only vulnerable aspect is the gas tank, capable of holding up to 120 liters of fuel, which Enrique warns Ciro about emphasizing the potential danger of a full tank acting as a bomb, ready to explode if any reckless actions are taken. Enrique then shares personal details with Ciro, disclosing that he is a 60-year-old widower from Quillums and reflects on his nostalgic memories of a secure childhood in a middle-class family where doors were never locked. He expresses regret that his current life is a stark contrast to those innocent times and longs for their simplicity. To test Ciro's moral values, Enrique poses a hypothetical scenario of catching his own son stealing. However, Ciro reaches his breaking point and threatens to report Enrique to the authorities. In a moment of madness, he even suggests he could harm Enrique and his family if he were to be set free. Unfortunately, the call abruptly ends, further fueling Ciro's anger and frustration. After some time, Enrique activates the air conditioner and sets it to the lowest temperature to torment Ciro. Despite Ciro's attempts to turn it off, nothing inside the car responds. 
he is left with no choice but to use his shirt to cover his wound and tries to stop the bleeding by tearing a piece of his pants and wrapping it around the injury. As Ciro lies in a vulnerable state, Enrique calls him again, repeating the question about his child stealing, promising water as a reward for a correct answer. Thirsty and desperate, Ciro responds to the question, but Enrique remains unsatisfied with his reply. Ciro pleads for mercy, claiming to have learned his lesson, but Enrique seems unconcerned and proceeds to share another incident. He recounts a previous event where two burglars broke into his daughter's house while she was parking her car. Despite being prepared for such situations, the thieves held Enrique's grandson hostage for three hours. Meanwhile, Ciro shows disinterest in Enrique's stories and questions why a doctor would deprive a wounded person of water. Before ending the call, Enrique compliments Ciro on his question and challenges him to guess his profession as a doctor. As Ciro contemplates his options, a police vehicle approaches and stops beside the SUV. Filled with hope, Ciro tries to catch the officer's attention, but instead, the officer issues a ticket to the parked car and walks away. Ciro pleads for mercy, claiming to have learned his lesson, but Enrique seems unconcerned and proceeds to share another incident. He recounts a previous event where two burglars broke into his daughter's house while she was parking her car. Despite being prepared for such situations, the thieves held Enrique's grandson hostage for three hours. In the following scene, a famished Ciro is on the verge of consuming a solitary bug that has entered the car. He is also battling a fever, as the wound on his leg begins to show signs of infection. Learning of Ciro's condition, Enrique switches on the air conditioner to alleviate the intruder's discomfort. It is then revealed that Enrique himself is suffering from cancer and has been given a year to live by his doctors. However, Ciro is too weak to fully grasp the information, and after a few minutes, he loses consciousness due to exhaustion and fever. Upon awakening, Ciro regains a surge of determination to escape. He frantically searches the car manual for a possible exit, but all his efforts result in him resorting to chewing a page in desperation. He becomes so desperate and helpless that he resorts to urinating in a container and drinking it. Suddenly, a thief attempts to break into the SUV, renewing Ciro's hope of escape. However, his excitement quickly fades as the locals apprehend and beat up the intruder. As night falls, Ciro's thirst and hunger intensify, pushing him into a state of delirium. Ciro contemplates the unjust distribution of resources worldwide, where a small fraction of individuals possess vast wealth while others struggle to survive. He expresses frustration with the systems and laws that favor the rich, perpetuating a cycle of poverty for the rest of society. Despite his dire circumstances, Ciro defiantly declares that he will not succumb to the system, even if it means facing danger or being shot. He believes his choice to become a thief following in the footsteps of his father and grandfather, is a way to resist the oppressive system. The following day, Enrique calls again and reads the newspaper to Ciro. In a rare moment of goodwill, he reveals a hidden chocolate bar in the SUV, momentarily brightening Ciro's spirits. After a day of inactivity, Ciro suddenly becomes determined. He strikes one of the damaged doors and manages to create a small hole, allowing him to see outside. Desperate for attention, he cries out through the hole but fails to attract anyone's notice. Later, Enrique informs Ciro that he has contacted his family. Upon hearing his family's name, Ciro breaks down in tears and pleads with Enrique not to harm them. With tears in his eyes, he questions why he deserves such punishment. However, Enrique remains unmoved by Ciro's pleas. Instead, he reveals Ciro's criminal record, exposing a past incident where Ciro killed someone. Years ago, Ciro entered a residence with the intention to steal but encountered two brothers who tried to stop him. Trapped, Ciro resorted to mercilessly shooting them. Enrique also mentions a separate incident where Ciro violently attacked an elderly bus driver. Ciro, however, refuses to take responsibility for his actions and blames the driver for preventing him from robbing the passengers. After charging his phone using solar power, Ciro attempts to contact his wife but fails to reach her. He leaves a voicemail expressing his remorse and apologizing for his past mistakes. Continuing his efforts, he repeatedly presses the car's start button and successfully turns it on. He discovers that the car can be activated without a key by pressing the button in a specific pattern. 
Zero fastens his seat belt and shifts the gear into reverse. Unexpectedly, the gear becomes locked in reverse mode, forcing him to drive backward. To attract attention, he accelerates and crashes the car into a post. Fortunately, the airbag deploys, saving him from harm. Zero manages to escape by kicking down the weakened bag glass, although he is in extreme pain. Despite his condition, he drags himself to a local gas station restaurant to find food. However, the restaurant's manager treats him rudely, demanding payment and immediate departure. Enraged by the manager's behavior, Zero pulls out his gun and shoots him. In the very next moment, Zero snaps back to reality, realizing that he was lost in a daydream and remains trapped in the SUV. His phone rings again, and it's Enrique on the other end. Zero, in a desperate plea, threatens to resort to extreme measures, but Enrique remains unaffected by his words. Laughing manically, he appears in front of the car, finally revealing his face. Enrique enters the vehicle and begins tending to Ciro's injuries. Exhausted, Ciro lacks the energy to free himself and eventually falls asleep. Upon waking up, he summons all his courage, grabs his gun, and fires at Enrique. Although Ciro narrowly misses, he manages to leap out of the car, finally liberating himself after days of agonizing captivity. Crawling on the ground, he fires Shada into the air, while Enrique desperately tries to recapture him. Almost successful, Enrique's pursuit is interrupted by the arrival of a police officer who notices the commotion and orders Enrique to surrender his weapon. Defiant, Enrique refuses, leading to an intense standoff. Jumping ahead two hours, a crowd of people, media personnel, and police have gathered at the scene. Enrique still holds Ciro at gunpoint, despite pleas for him to surrender. In a last-ditch effort, a skilled negotiator is called in to defuse the situation. He engages Enrique, seeking to understand his demands. As the entire country watches, Enrique begins listing the daily struggles he faces, highlighting the government's failure to address them. He describes dodging over 2,000 piles of dog excrement on the streets due to negligent pet owners, the neglected state of drains and garbage littering the roads, and the dire condition of homeless people. He also emphasizes the issue of deforestation. These revelations resonate with the public, garnering support for Enrique. However, the negotiator perseveres and ultimately convinces Enrique to release Ciro. After the police apprehend Ciro, they request Enrique's surrender. Instead, Enrique takes the opposite course of action. He enters his car and activates a timer, leading to a deadly explosion that kills him instantly. Thankfully, none of the bystanders are harmed. The movie concludes as Ciro is taken away to the hospital, leaving the general public to contemplate whether the seemingly cold-hearted doctor was, in fact, the protagonist. If you are interested in such films, please proceed to the next video on the screen, and also share your thoughts about this film in the comments. Give us a like and subscribe. Goodbye.